Hi, it's Chester Tuggle at Blue PK Computer Training. In this video, we're going to look at the four next loop in Excel VBA. It's an introduction to the concept of the four next loop. We're going to look at some simple examples that are going to help you understand how to apply it to your scenario. The four next loop, as the name suggests, helps you to loop a set of instructions. So to play it again and again and again. And here's how it works. You basically say four counter, and then you specify a start value and then an end value. And you can also specify a step value. You'll see how this works later. You then give a set of instructions that you want to loop within this four next loop structure. And then you just end the loop with next and then your counter. So the counter will go up every time the loop is completed by one, unless you provide another step value. So let's start off really simply. Let's get a four next loop to count from one to 10 and to display the results in column A. So we'll call our sub procedure count one to 10. So we're going to say 4x, we're going to call our counter x equals 1 to 10. So our start value is 1 and our end value is 10. Then we want to display the results in a cell. So the first result will be 1. So we'll want to display that in, we'll use the cells object. I want to specify a row index and a column index. So the row I want to input the value into will be the X value, initially one, and we're always inputting the value into the same column, column one within our sheet. And the value we want to show is X. Then we complete the loop with next X. So on the first cycle of the loop, X will equal one, so in cell 1, 1, so that will be A1, it will input the value 1. Then when the loop goes through its second cycle, x will equal 2. So in cells 2, 1, so that will be A2, the value will be 2, etc, etc. So let's play the loop, and you can see it enters those values into the appropriate cells. In the next example, I want to show you how to use this step value. What we're going to do is we're going to output the 12 times table. So 12 times table. Now we're going to declare our counters as variables. We should have done that really on the last example, but I just wanted to keep this simple to explain to you how it works. So we have two variables. We're going to have x and y. Dim x as byte, that's going to be the counter. And dim y as byte, we'll see how this comes into play later on. So we're going to start our counter, 4x equals, now the first value we want to input is 12, we're doing the 12 times table, and the last value will be 144. But we don't want to go up in an increment of 1, we want to go up in an increment of 12, so we can put step 12. Now the first value has obviously got to go into A1. Now we can use Y to do a bit of a calculation. So on the first loop, we want Y to equal one, to say that we want to enter the value into row one. So that would be X divided by 12. Remember, X will be 12 on the first loop. So Y will therefore equal one. X will be 24 on the second loop. So Y will equal two. So then I can say cells, I can use the Y value to give the row coordinate, and one is, the column coordinate is always one, and the value we're gonna enter is gonna be X. And then I just need to complete the loop with next X. So if I play this loop, I then get the 12 times table. Now the next example is going to display the full times table, 1 to 12 across the top, 1 to 12 down the side, 
And in order to do this, we need to do a nested for next loop. So we'll start by naming the sub procedure. So sub four times table. And we're going to declare some variables, X and Y again. Just going to call whatever you like. Dim Y as byte. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, first of all, for X equals one to 12. Then within that, we're going to say for Y equals one to 12. And then in cells x comma y, the value is going to be x times y. And then we'll say next y and next x. So what's going to happen here is on the first loop, x will equal 1. That's on the outer loop. And then on the inner loop, y will equal 1. So 1 times 1, well, in cell 1, 1, which would be a1, the value will be 1 times 1, which is 1. Then on the second loop for the inner loop, the y loop, y will equal 2. So we'll say in row 2, column 1, x, uh, the value will be x times y, 1 times 2, which will be 2, etc, etc. So we'll go the inner loop will have to loop 12 times before we get to loop the X loop a second time and so on and so forth. So if I play this, you'll see, if I just minimize this temporarily, we got our 12 times table. Now what I'm gonna do is also add just a little bit of code that will auto fit the results. So it's a little bit tidier. So we can say range, a1 to cells xy dot columns dot auto fit so if I play this I then get a much neater times table. Now the next thing I want to be able to do is allow the user to specify this value here, the 12. So the user might want to go up to 25. So you get a table showing up to the 25 times table, 25 across the top, 25 down the side. Now I'm going to give ourselves a little bit more space on the screen by deleting our previous sub procedures. And because we want to go up to larger values, potentially tens of thousands, for example, I'm just going to change our variables there. And I'm going to add a variable called user input. Dim user input as integer. And the sub procedure is going to ask a question before it runs the loop. And we're going to capture the input with an input box. So we're going to say user input equals input box. And I'm going to be short and sweet here, a bit abrupt to what value. So that's the question that's going to be asked. So now in my loop, I can say for x2 user input, for y equals one to user input, and then the rest of the sub procedure is as it was previously. So let's run this if I press play. So it asks to what value? So if I said 25, click on OK. It then, if we just minimize this, gives me the full 25 times table. 
Okay, so some simple little, exa little examples of how to use the for next loop. I'll do some videos after this one that will help you to see how it might apply to actual spreadsheets. But thank you very much for listening. Hopefully that's been useful. It's been Chester Tugwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training.